yeah, getting this thing started. How would you describe what Wisdom from North is all about? Right. Uh, good question. <laughs> well, uh, I come from the North. I come from Norway. So the name Wisdom from North just came to me on a jogging tour. And this was nothing that I sort of created consciously. It came out from a long journey of trying to find myself, <laughs> trying to understand what I'm doing here in this life, why I'm here. Do I have a purpose? What is the deeper meaning of life? So it actually started in a deep yearning for answers. And it also came from the deep depression that I've been in, where I thought I knew my purpose as a musical theater artist in Norway. But then I got trouble with my voice. And this is a very long story short. Uh, and then I, I had to find something else to do. And I felt so lost for so many years. But it sort of just came to me like this this yearning to interview people about the deeper questions of life mm -hmm. because i saw on television i felt it was so shallow negative news like i it just felt like something was missing like where could i go deeper and learn more about life from people who've had mystical experiences or are visionaries and philosophers so actually the idea just popped into my mind and I started interviewing people on YouTube way back when, in 2012. So I did that for many, many years. And I studied next to it and I work next to it. But now the last five years, I've actually had this as my job. Um, I think it was the universe that helped me again. Like it provided me with an idea that, hey, I know now so many amazing spiritual teachers. Why don't I create something more out of this? And out of that, my online membership was born, which is sort of like a spiritual Netflix where our members, they, they get uh, one new masterclass with a teacher that I've handpicked every month. And then out of that, we started creating online courses. So we have around 15 online courses now. And we work a lot with uh, Scandinavian people because I'm Scandinavian, but also English courses. And then just out of that, it grew more and more like collaborations and podcasts and everything. And my wish is just to help people really transform their lives and expand their consciousness and become more who they are. Because mm -hmm. I know how it's like to feel lost and have a lot of self-hatred and feel different and yep. feel like there's something wrong with me. And then understanding that, hey, I'm actually awakening. I'm actually awakening to something much more like a grander version of myself. So yeah, that that is sort of wisdom from North. And I still do my interviews on YouTube like so many years after because I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. So much good <laughs> synergy, it seems, that comes from it. Um, wow. Yeah, you've been at this since 2012. That's impressive. Thanks. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, I've only been at it for maybe four years now, but... I have for sure in those four years, maybe even less, I think, realized the value in having conversation with teachers. I'm sure you have come to realize that and how valuable it is to actually talk about the real stuff, you know, a little bit more than sports and the weather and pop culture, you know, actually going and diving deep with people that seem to know their stuff, seem to have a sense of wisdom. It's... Oh, it's priceless. It really is. And it's cool that you made it your job, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty awesome. That's a win-win for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's just, I think it's just awesome what you've created. Um, we're definitely on similar wavelengths in that area, in that regard. Um, so let me ask you this one. Did you find that going through these inquiries with people, you did sort of find your purpose and find uh, a sense of meaning in your life, you know, mitigate your depression. And uh, yeah, what did you get from it? I, I guess is what I'm getting at. Like, what? If, how do you summarize what you got from this whole journey? Oh, yeah. Great question. <laughs> I got so much. I got so much. And that's why I'm really passionate today about 
inspiring people to follow their dreams. Uh, and if you don't know what your dreams are, just follow your hunch about what mm. that next step is. Because from not knowing or having a clue about what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I just feel joyful interviewing, but yeah. I have no idea why. It just makes sense. And it didn't make sense to anybody else. That mm -hmm. was funny. <laughs> like people around, like including family, uh, were skeptic and they were like, why do you spend so much time on something you're not earning money on? Right. We have to earn our money. Preaching to the choir I right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're a former musical theater artist. You've always been struggling with money and now you're doing this. And mm -hmm. what is this? Like spiritual interviews, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've always felt like that, like I'm doing something wrong and like I'm not following the pattern. But it this time it was so strong within me. And actually, I was like, I don't give a F yep. because now I just want to be happy. Like I've been in this deep, dark depression. That's no life. Like that's no life. That's nothing. And now I'm feeling joy. Why should that not be right? Mm. So it was, I think sometimes you really have to fall deep down to, uh, to get that drive and power. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think I would have started with this if I didn't feel that temperament and uh, stood up for myself and felt this is true self-love. I got to do this. And somehow I started trusting the universe because I got so many amazing spiritual teachers that said yes to me. Like things were really flowing. Things just came to me and came to me. And I got maybe, you, you know, you can identify with that, that you get a lot of positive response where people are like, this is so helping me. Thank you for being there. Thank you for doing this. And then you feel like, well, yeah, I, I have to keep do, doing this. Yeah. Keep doing this. <clears throat> and then like, like I didn't earn money on it, but there was something within me that felt that I can trust that this will lead somewhere. And uh, I mean, it took many years before I sort of had the idea of how I could make this into a living. And after that, it took some years before I actually said, um, uh, what, is, what is it called? Before I left my day job and went fully into this. And I also had to grow because I had so many negative, uh, attitudes about earning money and mm. working with spirituality. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. somehow spirituality and money didn't go together. I felt guilty and all that stuff. And then I took a course with Steve Har uh, Harv Aker, uh, who is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And he has written the book, A Millionaire Mind. Like his team came to Norway. It was like this free course pretty intense course, like three days, like from eight to 11 in the evening, like eight in the morning. Mm. And uh, that shifted my mindset. Like I really understood that I can't help anybody if I don't uh, feel like I deserve abundance myself, or I don't dare to ask people to pay for my services. If I ask them to pay a cent, who will think that my services are great, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had to change all of this. So you ask me, how have I grown? I've grown in every possible way. I feel like mm. uh, I've been a depressed girl with so much self-hatred, having eating disorders, uh, having not, you know, the things I want in life. I've been longing for stability, like a boyfriend, like I didn't have anything of that. And I saw my girlfriend, they got married and got kids. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Mm -hmm. But looking mm -hmm. back, I think that I needed to do this. This is my path. Yeah. And it took me many years, but I finally felt, I finally met the man in my life, but that took many years too. So for me, I really had to do the work and say yes to my soul's calling. And that's what I'm passionate about teaching today because I'm having some webinars often, especially for, for Norwegians, where I teach them how to open up to find your soul's calling. Uh, because I believe we all have a calling. We just suppress it so yeah. much. Mm -hmm. And we often think, oh, it's not leading anywhere. So maybe it's not significant. I'm not earning money on it. But you have to be patient. You mm -hmm. have to be patient. And it's all about joy, yeah. I believe. 
when you do follow that joy, magical things starts to happen. Mm -hmm. And some people are like, I don't know what joy is, but okay, well, just do something. And I notice, is this joyful? No. Okay, then it's not that. Is this joyful? And I never knew that being interested in mystical things and the big questions of life could be something I can uh, base my life on and uh, that was going to be my purpose and make it possible for me to live the life I'm doing now. I never thought that was possible Mm -hmm. because like 20 years ago, that wasn't like in school, uh, (laughs) my teacher wasn't saying, you know, oh, you can choose a job where you're like a spiritual facilitator and you're on YouTube. Like that job (laughs) didn't exist. They don't teach that in school. They don't. So we have to sort of discover it from within. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the path for most of us. And I'm really passionate about inspiring people to open up to the thought that there's a deeper meaning with our lives and there's a purpose for all of us and it will unfold when you start to say yes to the universe when you just start to show up yeah and not control it from your mind yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know if that (laughs) answered your question that made a lot of sense that was very well said i think we are in a way you were my soul sister it seems to be uh-huh. <laughs> like you're you're preaching to me, you're speaking to me, like you're speaking to yourself in a way, like you're saying a lot of the same things I'm feeling. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, the important part is that you followed your hunch. Like there was something inside of you that said, this is it, right? There is something that said, keep going. This is it. Don't listen to the hair say what anybody else is saying. Following that intuitive guidance, right? That's the most important part in finding purpose would you say like there's something your heart maybe you could say that led you to where you are now yeah yeah Yeah. it is like this voice that you don't hear like some of the guests i'm uh, interviewing they actually hear a voice they have much more clear communication with the divine Mm. or the spirit within we can call it so many things i've never had that but I did get the name Wisdom from North. It just dropped into my mind the very day that I got the idea. Mm-hmm. So I've had a few moments that has been full of clarity. And it was actually how Wisdom from North started because I was sitting at a bench in 2012 and I was studying to become a primary teacher and I was not inspired, but I felt like, oh my goodness, like I can't drop out of that. Like I'm 32 years old and it's too late, like changing direction again. Mm. And again, back to all my successful friends around me and I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Single, no children, like nothing, no job, you know, like, okay, I have to stick this out. But I felt miserable. Like I really felt that I'm not in the right place. And then I was sitting with my father and he was like, okay, just finish the studies and then you'll see what you'll do. And I agreed. I was like, okay, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to finish it. I had three more years. And then I hear myself just saying, but dad, you know what I really want to do is to travel around the world and interview spiritual teachers about the big questions of life. (laughs) And as I said that, (laughs) it was an aha. Uh, 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 such a clear moment. Like in that moment, I just sat back and I looked at him and I said, that's what I'm going to do. (laughs) And I've never felt that clarity before. It Mm. was so strong. It was like what people call alignment, everything aligned in that moment. Mm. And I said to him, I have to go. And he didn't understand what the heck was going on with his daughter. I was like, I have to leave you. And I, I... got my sneakers i went into the woods and i jogged and the name wisdom from north dropped into my mind and i understood that this is perfect because i've been on camera like i have been in the soap opera in norway i'm comfortable with camera i've been in the us so i'm comfortable with speaking english i know so many spiritual teachers uh this is like this is it mm-hmm. <laughs> and within a, a week I landed two theater gigs where I got $5,000 and that was a lot. Hmm. Uh, So 
2,500 went to a website and the other money went to a camera. Oh. And I wouldn't have afforded it otherwise. Yeah. And that I got help in that week was like, where did that help come from? <laughs> so it, yeah, <laughs> it was magical. Yeah, it truly magical. was. Yeah, truly. Once we follow our intuitive guidance and the Dharma of within, it, life does seem to line up and life does seem to become magical. And um, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, that's for sure. I imagine you've gone through some struggle and trials and tribulations in the journey. But oh, yeah, <laughs> ultimately, you could probably say it was worth it. Like it was it's just part of the journey, you know? Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Now, on the note of um, intuitive guidance, something I like to talk about a lot. Because I do feel as though we all have that. There is some kind of intuitive guidance, a higher self, the sat guru within, some people say. Many different names, but I think it's in there for all of us. How do you say that we go about tapping into this? Is there certain modalities or practices that enabled you to see that or feel that within yourself? And um, how do you stay aligned to that? Yeah, it's a great question. And I feel like in one way I should have all these great answers and being an expert on it myself since I'm interviewing so many people who have these abilities. But in a way, I, I feel like I'm interviewing all these guests. Uh, I think it's been around 400 or something right now wow. because I actually need it myself. Uh, it is something that doesn't come natural to me. I'm very uh, left-brained. I'm very uh, analytical. Um, I've never, you know, seen an angel or anything like that. I've actually been out to my body, but that has been techniques that I've been doing, really practicing hard. Uh, and that was a moment in my life where I studied this uh, and only did that because I was on a sick leave, so I could. But right now in my hectic life, I really don't have the time to do practices like that. And I wish I had time, more time to meditate and all that. And it's such a stupid you know, excuse. I wish I had more time, but <laughs> I'm not the best at it. Like mm -hmm. I am an ant who's working all the time. I have a lot of energy. I go skiing, do, 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 do. Um, so the, that intuition, sometimes I feel like I really don't know what I think about this. I really don't know if that is right or that is right. Uh, and I think we are uh, in different areas. We know more, like we have like a more inclination of um, choosing easier or feeling easier what is right for us. And in other areas, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just a constant work uh, within myself that sometimes I ask for answers in dreams. Like that oh. has sort of been my thing that I ask for, is this right? Like we were just going to find an apartment and I love two apartments. Like I love them just as much. And I didn't know, like, should I live there or should I live there? And that's a typical example. And some sometimes I feel like, well, maybe both, uh, choices are just as good. It's just different experiences. Uh, but I did go deeper and I, I did an exercise there where I went into both apartments and I felt, am I expansive here? Like, a, am I expanding my, uh, my energy or am I contracting a bit? Mm. Uh, so I didn't think from my mind, I was just like, how do I feel? And I felt a little bit that I was more like expanding in one of the apartments and I went for that. Uh, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go for that. I'll go for how I feel energetic wise. And then it turned out to be very well, uh, like the best choice. Like now it's so many signs that this was the right apartment or a great choice. Like I know someone who's lived there before and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I, I think my answer is that I tried different techniques uh, and I used to think that I just know, but then I did human design. Like I interviewed so many people and then I, I started practicing human design and I realized, oh, you're a type that needs to sleep uh, on it mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. So now I realized, oh, I actually need more time. Uh, but yeah, like I'm a person who is open for a lot of different techniques. I've tried a lot and I'm maybe not like in one direction. So I constantly actually try different things, mm -hmm. but intuition, 
sometimes I just know. Sometimes yeah. I just know. Other times I don't have a clue and I have to go a longer path to investigate it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also, you know, part of the plan. I think that's also nothing to judge because that's how I function. And I think sometimes we judge ourselves for, oh, shouldn't I come farther? Shouldn't I have a super intuition right now? Shouldn't I be able to do this or that? I think we are exactly where we should be. And like I said in the beginning, if I would have like this perfect connection, <laughs> with the divine and my spirit team, I wouldn't have the curiosity to interview people. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't. I'm super curious still. And I think that's what's driving uh, my show, is that I'm genuinely <laughs> curious about people who have these extraordinary abilities. Mm -hmm. Same with me. Curiosity leads the way. And I would also extend that past podcasting as well. I would say even if you don't want to come on here and talk into a microphone on camera, um, let curiosity guide you in this whole thing. You know, we don't know yeah. everything. We don't know anything, actually. That's how I concluded to do this thing. I was like, I have no idea who I am, what all this is. I'm going to go ask some other people, see if they know what's going on. And I stay with that. It's the same thing. I'm on episode 200 and something, and it's the same idea. Just right. following that curiosity and truly being curious on what this other person is about and what they know. And like I said, you can extend that beyond podcasting into every part of your life because at the end of the day, every moment is a new and every person um, is a new in a way, you know, every stranger mm -hmm. is a new. So I try to see the guru in them and in everything, you know, try to see the Buddha in their eyes. It doesn't mm -hmm. always work, but I try to lead with that, you know, try to lead with curiosity and the magic does flow through, like we said before. So yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And um, I think an important part of what you said too was that you went into, I uh, forget paraphrasing, you went into one of the apartments and you just listened to how you felt rather than your mind. I think that has a lot to do with intuition. You know, the, the guidance isn't necessarily from thoughts. It's some other layer of our mind maybe not even mind, some other layer of something of our being that just resonates. There's mm. something like uh, some kind of ping that you get. And for me, it is like a yes or a no. It's like a, a resonance of attraction or aversion, it seems, related mm. to my intuition. And I feel as though if you're quiet enough, if you can sort of just still for a second, you know, it doesn't take long, the answers do flow through. And Again, you can extend that to any part of your life. We, we always have uh, this intuition intact within. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I can think. Can I jump it's, in here? Because yeah. I love what you're saying, because that has come later, um, um, the, the later few years, uh, a few years ago, that where I started to discover the body, like the body's wisdom. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I've sort of been looking for... Um, my ability to see, to hear. And then I started paying more attention to my body after I actually working with Yvette Rose, that is one of the teachers we collaborate with. She has uh, written a book um, called Metaphysical Anatomy, mm. a 700 pages book about all these wow. ailments and symptoms you could have and the metaphysical causes behind it. And you're, she's saying that your body's always talking. Are you listening? <laughs> so I started listening to my body and I realized that it's talking to me all the time. Mm. And I especially got to know that through a very hard test that the universe put me through. And that was a difficult relationship uh, that I was in some years ago where my body constantly said, I don't want to be here. I'm hurting. I can't breathe. But my mind was bypassing that all the time. Now, this yeah. is good. Now, this is love. And afterwards, I'm like, how, how could that have happened? My body was constantly saying, this is not good. Mm -hmm. And after that, I learned so much. So now I'm really grateful for it because now I feel I can trust my body. Mm -hmm. My body knows if it's saying like, you know, whatever it is, like a tension in the chest, difficulties with breathing, or like you, you just hold yourself in the stomach or whatever it is, like we have different symptoms that we can get to know in our bodies, then you can be sure that it's not right for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you have to interpret your own body signals. 
But that has helped me so much. I can just feel, is it an expansive feeling or not? Mm -hmm. And I always thought it was going to happen up here somehow, yeah. but it's my body. My mm. body knows what's yeah. good for me or not. Yeah, it's very well said. Very well said. It's a higher wisdom than knowledge per se. It's a higher wisdom than the thinking mind. It yeah. does, uh, I feel as though the true sage, a true integrated individual is one that reaches a sort of coherence within their mind and heart because the mind mm -hmm. never goes away. It's not like when you start listening in your body, the thoughts go away. It's like, no, you just kind of, you have a different vantage point with your body and the wisdom that comes from your body. And if you can sort of dance between the two, the mind and the heart, then I feel as though that's how you integrate right decisions in your life. And you know how to um, just ultimately create a healthier life for you in all facets, in all aspects of uh, mm -hmm. the journey that we have here as a human. Hmm. Um, yeah, I just, uh, you just gotta be aware of it. That's even a thing though, you know, because I feel as though right. the, the paradigm is all mind, right? The, the world we live in, it's all mind, logic, rationale, and that's pretty much it. That's what we've been conditioned into. You know, we talked about how school doesn't teach you this stuff. What school does teach you is all mind stuff, you know, get, get sucked into the mind stuff. So I feel as though. What I've come to find th through this whole journey of my own sadhana and speaking to people like you is that we have a higher intelligence within us and it has to do with deconditioning ourselves from the mind stuff, not negating it, just knowing that we are a little bit greater than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe a lot a bit greater than yeah, that. Yeah, so much greater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, that's truly priceless. Like once you tap into that, it's truly priceless. Yeah, it's something about not fighting the mind because you cannot. Like, mm -hmm. it's got to be there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we can't judge ourselves for it, for having negative thoughts, all that. It just happens. We all have them. And that's shadow work, which yeah. is another area, which is super interesting, uh, where the more we become aware of the shadow, the more we can accept it, the more it's not standing in our way anymore. And... Uh, I think Buddha and uh, Dalai Lama and all these great people and Jesus, they had negative thoughts, I think, yeah. but they are not attached to them. So I think negative thoughts happens, but mm -hmm. they're sort of observing it while we normal people are identifying with it. Like, oh, I'm thinking that that must mean I'm a bad person mm -hmm. or I'm thinking that that's why I think I'm meaning that. But sometimes like it, Horrible thoughts can just drop down into my mind. I'm like, where did that come from? Intrusive thoughts, yep. Yeah. We all got them. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting, this human life. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and what happens, I feel, is though, speaking from personal experience, you can probably attest to this, is that um, we do become less attached to them and we realize that they are not the master and commander. The true master and commander is that intuitive guidance within. That is... Um, that always leads the way. I mean, who knows whatever label you want to use. Like I said, the higher self, the side guru within. I've been saying God a lot. I never used to say God before I started this whole thing. But mm. I like to say that's that's the God within. That's the Holy Spirit, you know? That's mm. really what's within all of us that is leading us toward a better life. You just got to be quiet enough to listen to that. Mm. The silent whispers of the intuitive guidance. It's mm. all there for us, but it's not... um. It's not taught. That's the thing is it's not taught. Um, it's unfortunate, but I don't know. It's there. That's the thing. It's hidden in plain sight. It's always there. But I think that's yeah. part of the game. You know, I think that's part think, of yeah, why so. we're here, that we are going to discover it. We yeah. are going to make a decision to seek it. And that's part of it. Like if we would have learned about it in school and everything will be up in the day, it wouldn't sort of be nothing to thrive towards or work towards like i think that is the illusion that we're waking out from like it is a big paradox yeah it's a big paradox <laughs> yeah yeah it's the sort of hero's journey yes part of it. yeah it wouldn't be such a miracle to discover god if god was always like apparent you know i feel as though that's part of the miracle and the mysticism of discovering our higher self is discovering your higher self <laughs> like that is that yeah. is part of it that that is the wonderful part of the game once you do realize that because 
I was on a path that was very mind, just very rational, logic, all mm -hmm. science, left brain, I think, like you said. And I didn't believe in any of this stuff. You know, this, uh, if I listened to our conversation that we're having right now, five years ago, I would have turned it off within two minutes and be like, these people are crazy. What are they even talking wow. about? And then I got what happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh. Yeah. Are you asking me personally what happened? Yeah, I get curious. I just started to go within myself more to summarize it. Started to really, rather than chase that curiosity, because I've always been curious, but it was more outward. It was always more toward science and the analytical mind and trying to figure out stuff in the way of proofs and theories, which that's all great, but that's all mine. That only takes you so far. Once you turn that intro, that is it extrospection? I don't even know if that's a word. Ex exploration. Once you turn that inward into mm -hmm. introspection, that's when you really start to tap in and the universe really does change up and you start to feel the magic. Don't take other, somebody else's word for it. You really start to subjectively feel it. Like there's something that resonance is just so apparent. I'm talking about really just meditation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, tapping in, doing these. I see these as a meditation in themselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just all of the, the yogic modalities. That's when stuff really started to change because I just felt the difference. I don't know how, how else to explain it. It was so apparent to just feel different and not just listen to somebody else, listen to a lecture, read a book or blah, blah, blah from the outside. Turning that science inward because that's what people say yoga is as well. The sages say it's the holy science. That's what Sri Yukteswar says. He wrote a book called The Holy Science. I never thought of yoga like that. I thought it was just an exercise where people go to feel good. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, true, the true yoga, the yoking with the divine is an actual personal subjective science. Mm -hmm. And once you do that and you run the experiments on yourself, um, you come to find the results true, mm -hmm. truly. And very quickly too, if you do it with a sort of oh. um, adamant and earnest uh, will, it's uh, quite apparent. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's what changed. It went from out to in. <laughs> that that's so inspiring mm -hmm. and just a comment on that uh my experience is that in the beginning when you start exploring and going in within the spiritual sign or spirit or the other side wh whatever we want to call it is really helping you mm -hmm. uh inspiring you with uh giving you experiences that makes you eager to continue I had a lot of spiritual experiences once I turned the light within and started practicing and meditating and all that. And then it stopped. Then it stopped. And then I was like, oh, now I will have to work really hard. <laughs> yeah. And I've mm -hmm. heard that it wasn't just me. Like it seemed like it's coming in the beginning. A lot of things are happening. And then you got to do the work to make it continue, which yeah. sort of makes sense, but it's it's really sweet. It feels like it's like, oh, Yannick is waking up. Let's get her some help and to know that this is actually true, that she's not crazy, you know? So it was really good with those evidences that I got. Yeah. So I've gotten a lot of evidences that makes me know that there is more. Yeah. And I'm really grateful for that because then it's not a belief anymore. It's actually a knowing. Yeah. Mm. That's powerful stuff. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. And on the note of you said you got to do the work, I think that's just part of the hero's journey as well. Think of uh, the Buddha and even Jesus. The Buddha went out. He followed the ascetic path. You know, he reached enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. He starved himself, mm. literally starved himself of uh food and then starved himself of any kind of you know social life and just he wanted to become enlightened and that was his thing he went out and become the, the the cliche monk in the cave that we think of right and then he realized in the journey this is an important part of the buddha's journey i feel like is overlooked he got enlightened but he, he, he decided to come back into the kingdom and teach what he mm. found out he had to do the work as well. He didn't just stay out there in the woods. And same thing with Jesus, you know, 40 days and 40 nights. And I imagine there's other sages that also follow that same path. Because I do feel as though um, there is a sort of archetype and blueprint to the spiritual path and really just life altogether. And it's that you come to find and know yourself. And then after you know yourself, 
this may be an oversimplified version, but I'm going to say it anyway. After you know yourself, you start to um, extend that knowledge of yourself to your other parts of yourself, which are other people. You know, you, you start to spread the love. You find the love within, and then you start to spread the love, the, the gospel, the good word. Um, that's just part of it, right? It's just part of it. It's like, um, I don't know. It's like, how can you hold all of this in? You know, I, I feel as though, like, I can't. It's like sort of obligatory, you know? Like, um, you could easily have these conversations, me and you, and not record them and not put them out but it's nice to know that like you're 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 helping or potentially helping others along the way like do you feel as though the work is somewhat obligatory i know you said you were getting paid from it right but you are getting paid from it but i think this stuff is priceless you know i'm not getting paid from it that much a little bit but i would do this anyway you know even if there is no potential to be paid or not i would do this stuff anyway even if i'm not putting it online oh, for people you to think I'm there. cool. oh my back okay you're back okay so uh i mean so i'll just stop going off of my rant my question is uh do you feel as though this work is like obligatory do you feel it's priceless to be able to share this wisdom to other people you know is there a part of you it's just like i have to Yes, definitely. Uh, and I'm, I'm really grateful that this is what I can do and live from what I'm doing. So I don't have to do anything else because I want to do this all day long mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can. And I'm so grateful for that, that because I really believe, like I said in the beginning, to do what you love. Like I have a friend now yeah. is in a job. He just hates and mm -hmm. I see how it's destroying him. And I see how I'm excited every day to jump out of bed because I'm going to edit a YouTube video or a course or have a yeah. webinar. And I'm super excited about it. And I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. Uh, but yeah, like I can't imagine doing anything else. At the same time, I don't want to be attached to, oh, I have to do this uh, my whole life because I might change. Like one day I might wake up and feel like I want to do something different. Like that hasn't happened. Yeah, It's sort of like, you know, you get married and uh, you never know if you're going to stay in love all your life or if you just w wake up one day and you feel like this is wrong. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I want to be in another relationship or be single or, or that just feels wrong, but it hasn't happened. Like it just feels so right every moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm letting myself be guided. Yeah. So right now, yeah, it feels like I can't stop. And it's interesting with YouTube because I did stop for a while. Like I've been there since 2012, like you said, like that's a long time and it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I haven't been like super inspired all those years. And that's because my numbers started to just flatten. And the feeling I got was that this is not reaching out and that, you know, it was my baby and I felt like I was working so hard and it just didn't reach out. And I felt like I maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm not supposed to do it anymore. Like I started doubting myself. And so I put my energy other places and we created online courses and memberships and all that and focus on Scandinavia and Norwegians. And then I think that was right because all of a sudden something magical happened again. I discovered um, another podcast called Next Level Soul, Next Soul Level, Next Level Soul with mm -hmm. Alex Ferrari. And I contacted him and I just felt when I saw his show, I was like, well, I used to be doing that. You know, I used to be doing that. And I listened to his episode and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so inspiring. I, 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 I so long to do this again. And I think I just had, you know, an interview every fourth month or something like that at that time. Uh, and I contacted him and we had an amazing conversation where he interviewed me. I interviewed him and actually he helped me in the way like he has been an angel for me because he inspired me to start again. And he updated me sort of on YouTube, what to do, what not to do. And uh, I went full in, full on again uh, with two interviews a week. And I've done that for a year now. And it has been so great and so much fun. And I've met so many incredible people. 
So I think I just needed that break for many reasons and that that was divinely planned as well because I needed to build my company. Of, you know, I couldn't just do YouTube and I sort of needed a new fresh uh, perspective on all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, literally I had a comeback <laughs> mm -hmm. and it has been very joyful and we'll see how long I'll keep doing exactly YouTube, but I, I still love it. We shall see. I think it'll be a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. I think uh, moral of the story is if we're following our heart, it's not like this, something will happen or, and come to fruition. You know, Rome wasn't necessarily built in a day. Um, I like to think it's like a, the parable of the tortoise and the hare. You got to be the tortoise, man. And the world that we live in is everyone's trying to be the hair. We're trying to get it right now, right here, right now, as many views, as much money as possible, right here, right now, today. But if you're truly following your heart, following that guidance, following your dharma, it's not like that. It's uh, It takes a little bit longer. You got to have patience in this whole process. And mm. not even, like I said, just with podcasts. And I feel as though you can put that into any endeavor in life. Mm. Have patience in this impatient world you gotta have patience <laughs> and why is that it's because you have to evolve mm. you know maybe you're not ready at all mm -hmm. to have that success to reach out to that many like looking back i wasn't ready i really had to walk small steps because i wasn't ready to meet so much attention around me and my show and what i'm doing mm -hmm. so i'm very happy now looking back that this has taken a long time yeah and um, it's also the the matureness within like i just had a teacher who said you have matured so much when i'm seeing you in live webinars right now you're so grounded you're so relaxed and engaged and and i not don't necessarily notice it but people outside notice it that there's uh, a matureness that has come in so we got to trust that our soul you know is maybe it's taking time because you are cultivating something you're developing something you mm -hmm. are being prepared for something great mm -hmm. and we can't hurry with our heads and try to control it needs to happen now no yeah. it happens when it's divine timing exactly trust faith for sure. Mm. Yeah. Trust and faith. Very important. It's funny because you said you're creating something, but that something is yourself. You know, <laughs> like our work is really just an extension of ourself. We're creating yeah. ourselves. We Powerful. are. Powerful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the air in a way. Like uh, <sighs> yeah. we used to like have work with physical stuff and now we're creating things out of the air, yeah. which is so magical. That's really where it is, is right? Yeah. What is AI? What 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 is it like pulling it from the ethers and just bringing it <laughs> into some kind of material form yeah inspiration does seem to work like that creativity altogether does seem to work like that especially when you get like an idea pop in your head like you said wisdom from north it just like bing and it's just like where, where'd that come from i don't know i know i don't know Someone's and people ask out. me like why is it called that i don't know like it just <laughs> came to me <laughs> that's awesome yeah and you just know too. That's the thing when it comes to you. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Peculiar, peculiar stuff. So let me ask you this one, maybe to wrap it up. This might be a good note. Um, how would you summarize, if you could, this might be a big question. How would you summarize this wisdom that you have gained from all of these talks all over the years? Is there some kind of correlation between all of these people you know, some kind of truth that you could convey or truths that you could convey to us um, from all of these inquiries that you've had with people? Wow, that is a big question. And the funny <laughs> thing is that I hear often that I ask so big questions and people like, there are 10 <laughs> questions in your question. And Turning the tables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it really depends on what area, because I interview people with near-death experiences, pre-birth, UFOs, channeling, but uh, it sounds like a cliche, but that everything is love and that there's no judgment. And uh, obviously that life continues and that we plan our lives and that we can't really go wrong uh, and that there's a deeper, deeper purpose and meaning behind our lives. 
that it's uh is very well orchestrated and uh we have a team on the other side we're never alone and we're so taken care of and what i find inspiring is that i chose this life so mm. i chose that relationship i chose to be single for 10 years i chose to feel lost so many years i chose this yeah. i chose my family so victimhood no use going there mm -hmm. <laughs> even though many of us have been there i think going consciously into victimhood is something else than unconsciously like you can feel okay i feel right now i feel sorry for myself like doing it consciously is much of a higher vibration than unconsciously and i still live that uh, there for many years like in my depression like there's something wrong with me all of this now i i have changed that perspective totally yeah. Yeah. uh so i mean i think i've learned so much more about empowerment and i love that word empowerment because it's sort of from giving your power away all the time to everybody else in society and how they should tell you how you should live yeah. taking the power back and seeing the grandness and the greatness of who you are and who i am mm -hmm. and that we're just as powerful and just like you said like seeing the buddha and everybody and that wow i'm meeting a new person here but it's actually an aspect of myself yep. it is actually another part of god mm -hmm. and looking at the people that way changes everything yeah. so it's like a mixture of all of this it's just so empowering and so loving and i don't think i've experienced one person that i've interviewed that has been teaching something disempowering Mm. But I've noticed teachers out there, uh, like especially in the 90s, there were like, you know, some dark teachers that wanted to, you know, I'm the leader and you yep. should do what I say. And if you do that, you're going to transform your life. Like, I, I don't think that works anymore. And I really hope people will run the opposite direction if you meet a teacher like that. Uh, yeah. But on my show, it, it's just so much love, so much empowering. Uh, and what I wish with it is that people who watch it are going to just raise their vibration and feel that hope and that, oh my God, feeling that there's so much more and there's mm -hmm. so much more within me that I can like, you know, uh, light that spark within that mm -hmm. I discovered, like you discovered also like, oh my God, there's so much more to talk about. How Seriously. amazing. <laughs> That is yeah. my wish, because I think that is the real truth. Like, this is the illusion that it's just birth to death and nothing more. And you have to work hard and get all these things to survive. That is the boring stuff. Like, that's not real. Like, the real thing is the magic. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's my my uh, my biggest takeaway. The mm. real thing is the magic. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. Oof, that's good stuff. The real <laughs> thing is the magic. We are involved in a higher order, much higher order, more than meets the eye. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. And it all has to do with love. It all has to do with love. It's a cliche, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. I believe so. Yeah. And I, you know, about self-love, like that's not egoistic at all. It is actually acknowledging your divinity yeah. within you. Mm -hmm. So the opposite is actually denying your very existence and essence and true essence. And that's why for me, practicing self-love, I understand that, oh my goodness, that is so important because I'm acknowledging that I'm God and that you are God and we're all God. God. Oh God. <laughs> and that's again, so empowering. Yeah. And so that's my what's passion. What's more empowering than that? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. We're all, we all realize we are a fragment of the divine of god yeah. of source like what more do you need than that it's true it's true stuff people yeah. it's true stuff <sighs> i feel it that's for sure i feel it um that's hey good. yeah on that note i think we can probably start to wrap it up i don't know what, what much more we have to say um yeah i thank you for coming on here i think this was a great talk i wish you all the best um Please keep doing your thing. You have a very bright spirit, um, very warm energy about you. Um, that's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you so much for letting me come to your show. I really appreciate that. And uh, I, I, I'll just toss the ball over to you. And I hope you'll continue what you're doing, because I think it will be a magical ride for you as well. <laughs> and who knows where you go, where it's going to end, but uh, it will end beautifully. We shall see. We shall see. One day at a time. <laughs> yes. That's how I like to live. It's the journey, not the destination, right? That's another cliche. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, well, yeah, I uh, thank you again. I thank anybody that listened this long and that's it. Peace and love to you. Is it Janik or Janek? Um, in Norway, it's actually Janneke. So Janneke. Uh, okay. I guess uh, Janneke. Janneke. <laughs> so, and how do you say your last name? Uh, Oynes. Okay. Janneke Oynes. Yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. I tried that one. Thank you for coming on here. Peace and love to you and peace and love to everybody that listened. See ya.